Um, I started off literally on the drawing board, uh, redrew the entire organogram uh, for the various businesses of the UB group. Uh, you probably know that we had almost 20 different operating businesses at that time. We had Kisan Foods, we had UB Mac Batteries, we had Hindustan Polymers. Uh, we were in different and diverse businesses. And uh, then to sort of, you know, uh, really make a judgment on what would be sustainable in the long term because uh, the mantra was focus. Um, that was a challenge in itself, but uh, I coped. And I must say that I got the support of, uh, of you know, all those who worked for UB um, and, and uh, I was able to sort of now, over a period of time, uh, assess which businesses would be really world class, which would not be dependent on tariff protection, uh, that could really stand on their own two feet in the global context. And so we narrowed down basically the UB Group's uh, uh, verticals to, to six now, from what was 20. Uh, 25 years ago. Uh, so a lot of restructuring has gone on. Of course, along the way, a lot of acquisition has also happened. Um, you know, now, of course, King Fisher Airlines is, is a very large and visible part of the UB group. But uh, most people don't know that we were actually the first private airline to be launched following uh, liberalization. We took off in 1990 with two Dornier aircraft um, under the flag of UB Air and actually uh, operated from Bangalore to, to Chennai, to Mangalore, uh, before the government suddenly decided that we were only air taxis and, and not regular airlines. Um, at that time, you know, my visions for creating a large modern airline obviously fell flat, and so we, we shut the business. But we've been tracking the aviation opportunity um, along uh, the many years until we finally launched uh, Kingfisher in uh, May of 2005. And uh, the, we've been vindicated on our projections of growth. Um, you know, when we launched Kingfisher, uh, the total number of passengers in India was 14.5 million. Today we have 48 million people flying domestically. So the growth is there and the growth will continue uh, with a GDP that's growing at 7 plus percent. Air travel in uh, India has to grow and, and grow uh, pretty significantly because there is no other alternate means of transport given the geography of our country. Um, apart from that, I bought Manglo Chemicals and Fertilizers. Um, the rationale behind that was uh, not entirely business driven because uh, it's a business that's uh, dependent on the uh, subsidy from the government of India so long as the subsidy regime continues. Uh, but I was told very clearly by the then political masters that because we were um, in the alcohol business, which didn't quite follow Gandhian principles, uh, that I should be doing something in national interest. And of course, fertilizers and farmers are very, very important and critical to India. Uh, we bought uh, Manglo Chemicals and Fertilizers from the government of Karnataka. It was a terribly financially sick company, but. Uh, Fortunately, we were able to restructure it, pay down all the debt, and now it's a nice, robust, profitable company and one of only two surviving in the whole of South India. Um, we sold businesses that uh, really, um, you know, I thought would be difficult uh, to face up to true international competition. Uh, we sold Kisan Foods to Unilever's because with Unilever and Nestle around, I mean, I really was uh, concerned about our ability to invest the kind of resources required. I mean, you, you see the war between Coke and Pepsi in our market. I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars are being invested uh, for the long term. Uh, and we clearly did not find ourselves in that kind of position. So we sold out at a good price. Similarly, in, in petrochemicals, um, we had Hindustan Polymers on the east coast of India and Vizag. But then with Reliance um, sort of announcing the Hazira project uh, with various other multinationals that were looking at India with the um, uh, project coming up in, in West Bengal, Haldia, I said, you know, either we have to have a few thousand crores in our pocket uh, in order to make our petrochemical presence felt or else we should exit. And so we exited and we sold the Sun Polymers once again at a good price to LG Petrochemicals. So, you know, we've been uh, pretty uh, 
tough uh, and ruthless about examining our own businesses. Uh, there's no emotion involved. It's uh, purely business-driven judgment. Um, I don't believe that UB should ever be a corporate museum where we just keep collecting companies uh, that don't make long-term strategic sense. So yeah, it's been um, quite an exciting time over the last 25 years.